In a recent past video, I presented to you the idea of finding a hidden pearl within your robes. Talked to me by my Roshi Jakushu at the Zen um, Mountain Center. And today I'm going to present a different idea uh, that's a valuable training tool. And this is the concept of the inner teacher and the uh, unbiased observer. And um, today I'm wearing my pendant. This is kind of show it to you. This is my representation of my inner teacher, my Tao Chi. And um, what this concept is, is that um, normally we see the world through our eyes looking out. And uh, this concept is to be able to create an entity where you can look at yourself. And so you kind of like to create like a video recording of yourself and that this is useful in many di different aspects of your practice. For one, just in practicing your form, um, normally if you're looking out and you're within the presence of your own mind, uh, to extend your arm out, you just have to go by the inside feeling of what is level. Um, if you're trying to present the idea of this uh, outside observer, then the observer would be like observing whether your arm is level or not. And um, I grew up trained as an artist, and I had some excellent art teachers, and they were, they were the ones that instilled in me the idea of like looking outside of my normal view and looking at things from a different view. Um, for example, when I was doing landscape design, I would do uh, kind of a 3D overhead impression of the garden that I was designing to present to the customer so that they could kind of get a bird's eye view of the, of the rendering of the idea of the landscape. And in art school, uh, we were challenged to do the same thing, to take an object and just imagine what the backside of it would look like. And so I have had a lot of training in being able to project my mind into a different format than from just the normal view of looking out. And so the, the value of this tool is like, uh, again, in doing a form, you can kind of uh, observe. You know, in the old days, when we were like studying with uh, Siku and Portsmouth Square, there was mirrors surrounding all the walls. And you could do your form, but you have to look at the mirror and then you know look, look back to where you're supposed to be looking, look in the mirror to check your form, you know, and then after a while you can kind of understand what your body would feel. Uh, and that's kind of the concept, except for uh, these days, maybe if you're working outside, there are no mirrors. Well, a valuable training tool is what we're doing here, a video camera, so that you can kind of like uh, go back and look at the video camera and really inspect what you're doing. Because a lot of times when you're in the mind doing the thing that you're doing, um, you can't see or feel because the mind can only think about a few things at a time. So while you're busy working on the hand position and all that, are you conscious of where your feet and legs are and you know how low you are, uh, many things like that. So as you're doing like a more difficult task, then it's hard to observe everything at once. And so the more you develop uh, this outside view, the more you can really um, start to be able to see yourself. On top of that, I would train my students to create this uh, other entity uh, I like to call this other entity the unbiased observer. And when I say the unbiased observer, it means that, um, okay, so you're watching me. And it's easy for you to look at me, how I do my things, how I speak, um, how I'm presenting this, and come up with a, your own critique of what I'm doing. That's because it's you observing me and you're not involved in being me. But it's much harder for a person to criticize themselves or to see themselves with an unbiased view. 
And so uh, part of this uh, training tool is to create this other entity, this other mind that looks at yourself and can um, be eventually, it becomes more than just a, a viewer, it becomes your advisor. And that's why I love the, uh, the concept of this little pendant. He's my advisor. If you've ever watched the uh, historical Chinese movies of uh, generals, the general always has an advisor. And the general might be a badass fighter or a warrior, super warrior, but he only sees it through that view. Whereas the advisor is usually a scholar, a knowledgeable man that sees things on a much different level. He sees the whole forest instead of the tree. And so the advisor gives the information to the general to help him in his uh, you know, planning and scheming. And so the, uh, uh, the advisor, the strategist, these are all things that I'm talking about to create this entity that becomes eventually uh, on a higher level, it becomes your inner teacher. And that's what the Lao Shi pendant represents, your inner teacher that walks you through life and gives you advice. And um, many times, uh, like when you're sparring with somebody, you're doing chi sao, or you're doing pushing hands and stuff, um, in the moment, you can understand what's happening, but then to replay it in your head, uh, what happened, and then to go home and be able to correct and re-strategize how you, you know, approach the next session with your training partner. All, all that tool of having that videotape to record you as you're doing it is uh, again part of that valuable too. So when I would be sparring or doing chi sao or doing pitch hands, um, I could actually go back instantaneously and later on too replay almost every move because I had trained that outside observer. So um, this is the kind of a concept that I'm presenting to you to make you even aware that there's that possibility of creating this outside entity looking in at yourself. Um, the, the, it's hard to, not everybody can do this because uh, again, uh, not everybody is visual orientated, but the more you work at it, the more you'll be able to do this. Um, there's a couple of exercises that you can do to help train yourself to do this. And of course, again, by taking a video of yourself, um, that's the first step to do something, do your form, do your practice, practice your kicks. And again, this is not style specific. Uh, this can be used for any kind of training that you do. I mean, anything. But uh, since we're talking about um, form training here related to Master Guoling Ying and also this uh, concept of Kung Fu as a practice, um, we kind of keep it within that realm. Um, you can use this tool as a valuable tool to build and to talk to yourself, you know. You know, everybody already has an inner um, teacher. Um, I present these ideas to you, and I just kind of present it openly, and you can believe me or you cannot. That's your inner teacher, right? It's like you listen to what I'm saying, and there's a part of you that says, uh, it's all BS. We're all, I like what he says. That is your inner teacher that you're using to uh, assimilate information. And you know, even though you have a teacher, again, as I talked in about the video of perfect form, if you just mimic and listen to your teacher and do only as your teacher says, then you're not really developing that inner teacher within yourself. And since my teacher is long past and gone, I've had to carry on on my own and again, that has created a need for me to use this concept of the inner teacher to, uh, uh, for my own progression. And um, having that unbiased observer is very critical because uh, we tend to look at it through our own ego and then we kind of like boost up with that ego and that persona that we try to create. Whereas the unbiased observer that you've created um, doesn't, accept all that BS. It just like it has to look at you raw. And that's a hard thing to create, something that's looking at yourself in an unbiased manner. 
And the more you do that, the more you're able to do it. And eventually that voice, that inner teacher will kind of lead you through your practice and tell you if to go in this direction or to go in that direction. Um, that's pretty much what we're experiencing now in terms of uh, a voice telling me that I needed to get on YouTube and kind of present more material about Master Golden Ying that I had, uh, wasn't being presented. And that's where we started here on this channel. And as we go along, that inner teacher kind of keeps talking to me about how to do these presentations and what to present. And so that's an example of my own practice kind of reflected back. Um, it's kind of like a multi, I go out and then it comes back and then I go out, comes back. Uh, so again, the exercise that I would advise to create this is first to, in your own mind, for example, in the daily life, you're walking down the road and you see yourself uh, walking down the road. Here, I'm going to take a But if you just stop for a moment and imagine like you're watching a movie, watch yourself walk down. The road. Just imagine yourself walking down the road. The more you imagine and the more you visualize, the more you actually create that persona, that reality, and it kind of uh, the visualization is such an important tool, like they discovered in, way back in the 60s. They had some Russian experiments, and the people that uh, visualized doing an activity were as successful in training and learning as the people who actually physically did it. Because when you physically do it, you make mistakes too, and you, they're making mistakes as much as doing it correctly reinforces the mistake as well. But the people that only visualize the perfect movement, the perfect thing, like a basketball shot, they can only visualize the perfect basketball shot. And amazingly, they were as, as successful as the people actually practiced and missed and practiced and made, you know, and so forth. So that's the power of visualization. And so just by you imagining seeing yourself walking down the road, that's like the first um, lesson that you could do to try to create that idea of him picking yourself out of the normal seeing vision and then kind of looking back within. And the second, do your form, uh, just a little bit of your form. Not a, don't do a whole uh, videotape of a long lesson because you won't be, be able to remember what it felt like and then what you can imagine you seeing. Just do a few moves and then videotape yourself and then look at your videotape so that you can kind of gain that perspective of the outside view of yourself. And the more you do that, then the more you're going to be able to kind of imagine what you look like in this, this presentation, any presentation, um, to the looking from the outside in. And then finally, um, to create this uh, entity, the more you kind of like do this and videotape and then eventually don't videotape, but try to utilize that entity that you've created to watch what you do. So in daily life, stop every, you can actually set an alarm on your watch or kind of set an alarm on your phone. And when that beep goes off at that moment, try to imagine what you look like, whatever you're doing. I mean, it could just be anything. You're working, you're chopping wood, you're with your pet, you know. And for that moment, imagine what you look like. And the more, again, the more you create this, the more power you have to be able to look back on yourself. So the first step is to create the unbiased observer. Well, the first step is to create the ability to observe yourself from a different perspective. The second step in this is to create the unbiased observer. And unbiased means without prejudice, to be able to look at yourself and be critical of what you're doing. And a lot of people, unfortunately, are overly critical of what they're doing. Unbiased means that you're not overly critical or you're not too supportive. 
that you're just basically able to free yourself of your ego and your concept of who you should be, how you should present yourself to the public, and then just uh, look at yourself with, as if you were looking at another person. Again, we have no problem looking at another person and criticizing or kind of analyzing them uh, with their own idea of uh, being, you know, of course, a little bit biased sometimes. But I'm saying that we're able to look at something else without that prejudice of, of being ourselves. So creating this unbiased observer allows us to look at ourselves and say you just got in a big argument with your wife. Then you go off and do your thing and you're pouting. All of a sudden, the unbiased observer comes and says, you're pouting, you know, you're just, you treated your wife badly, you know. And that little voice becomes that unbiased observer that tells you, you know, how to act in life and be righteous. And again, from that un just the state of the unbiased observer, it becomes then the inner teacher and your advisor. And really, if I were to present one thing to the world, that would be the thing that I would want to present, the idea that of the inner advisor, because that's what is going to walk you through life and help you throughout your life and guide you. As we get older, we're able to look back and look at the road that we travel. And so this uh, gives you information going forward in being able to look back and see where you've come from and see how things that you did affect yourself. And then again, this advisor of yours it also helps you in that all, assimilating all that information in proceeding forward. So that's my lesson for today. Thank you.